Welcome to the wonderful world of welding. Welcome to our space cast on welding. So today we're working on chapter 22, Flux Cord Arc Welding. Now this is some interesting stuff, and there's not a really a lot of information on it, guys. So if you have any questions or confused about it, what have you, you need to come to me because I've really noticed there's a not too much on self-shielded um, electrodes and things like that. And it's a little bit different than dual shield. Okay, so let's get down to it. So self-shield flux core arc welding. What it is, is that it's kind of like an inside out stick rod. Okay, so instead of the flux on the outside, the flux is on the inside. And the metal, the electrode sheath, is on the outside and it is tubular. Okay. It does the same thing as a stick rod. It creates a gaseous shield, creates slag, and we're able to weld. Now, there's another variation of that. Let's see if they have it. And it would be, so FCAWS. S is for self-shielded. FCAWG, okay? It has the same thing, so let's go back. It still has the flux in the interior. It still has an electrode sheath, but it also needs gas okay so it makes a better bubble of gas okay so that would be fcawg okay so we know that flux core requires a cc power or excuse me cv power source a wire feeder shielding gas regulator flow meter and if we're running some really super duper stuff like 300 amps and above we're also going to want a radiator or a water cooler. Okay, that also means that we can have a water cooled gun. This is going to be a lot hotter. Usually, flux core is, you know, in the 150 to 200 amp range. Okay. This is really, 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 really smoky if you guys haven't noticed. Okay, it's really important that we use our fume extractors. Make sure they're as close as you can get them without whacking your head. Um, but I also want to remind you, you know, uh, you guys. You can probably yell it, scream at me at times, and I don't hear a word you're saying. It's because of how much welding I did with my head in the fumes. Um, and I've done it and not understood the consequence. So really, um, for you guys to better understand, there are hairs in our ear that allow us to hear. When we have a loud sound, those hairs lay down, okay? And then they eventually come back up. But what happens with those fumes is that those fumes, the little particles of fumes, actually lay down those hairs, but then it's hard for those hairs to come back up. And if you have more and more and more on top, you have loss of hearing. So we wanna make sure that we stay out of the fumes. All right, next. Of course, we need a CV welding source, okay? Same type we, we use for MIG. Usually they're 100% duty cycle, okay? And what would we also need to change? We're gonna change our rollers because we're probably gonna need a knurled roller. And we're gonna probably maybe even change our liner and our tip. Our liner needs to be larger um, or it should be able to accommodate it. And our tip needs to be larger. Um, for dual shield, we were running 0.045. And for self-shielded, we were um, running 072. So it's a lot bigger. All right, so we also noticed there uh, for self-shielded guns, FCWS, um, it's a little bit different. These are the gooseneck. These goosenecks can come in different lengths and widths, and pretty much it's to protect the welder from the heat and the spatter. So uh, we can have them at any length, okay? You guys also need to make sure that you have a little uh, rubber protector here protecting the threads. If you don't, please let me know so that I can get one to make sure. And this one would be more for gas, okay? But there's also a little handle right here. It's supposed to be like your little uh, heat shield, okay, to make sure that the spatter and the other stuff does, you know, land on your hands. All right, classification, classification system for carbon steel electrodes, flux core, right? So here it is, E for electrode, right? Seven, only seven, is going to be our tensile strength in 10,000 psi. X. Well, X is a placeholder. We can have one all position, zero flat, and two F, so horizontal fillet. The T there tells me it is a 
tubular. I can also have a C there for composite. Now, I can have a dash, okay, and it's going to give me a number, 1 through 14. It's going to tell me polarity, whether it's gas shielded or self shielded, and whether I have a multiple pass, okay? So it's going to give me all of those characteristics, but the one that I really want to pay attention to is here, okay? I can have a mixed gas, M, or I can have a C for CO2. So this will tell me whether it is a self shielded or requiring gas, okay? And then we can have improved toughness as well. And then this is going to tell me my hydrogen limits, just like on my 7018s and things like that, okay? But this one probably is one of the most important ones and these as well, okay? It tells me exactly what it's about. All right, here we go. Now, most, well, come back here. Most self-shielded electrodes, FCAW what? S. They run in DCEN, electrode negative, okay? And most, I'm not going to say all, but most gas shielded are going to run in DCEP, okay? So we run E71T-8, electrode negative. We also want to make sure that it's made for single or multi-pass. Um, sometimes when we use something that is not multi-pass, um, it doesn't have the same type of... Um, deoxidizers and things like that, okay? So we need to pay attention to what we're using. All right, of course, what is it? Rule number three, thickness of material determine just about everything. So here's a jump off point for you guys, and that way if you're unsure, so for 045, so remember current, not wire feed speed, okay? 150 to 225, 22 to 27 for flat, horizontal, and vertical. So remember, it's a uh, wire feed speed is uh, part what your current is. So if we take a look at this, if we're looking at eighth inch material, let's see, hold on. let's say three quarter, your arc is going to be 25 to 28, 150 to 170. That's your wire feed, okay? And of course, we need to make sure that we get a good electrode extension. If we don't have a good electrode extension, we're more likely to get porosity. You're not going to have enough um, depth of penetration. And the other thing is, is that when we have a little bit more of electrode extension, it also allows for gas expansion. Okay, we need it to have some gas expansion so that it will cover. All right, onwards. Come on. There we go, little guy. All right, so remember, self-shielded or arc welding, FCWS. The shielding gas is provided exclusively by the flux within the electrode. FCAWG, or gas shielded, the shielding is obtained from both CO2 gas flowing from the gas nozzle and the material contained within the flux core of the electrode. FCAW produces a, a good weld with less cost and effort than we would with SMAW or SAW, submerged arc welding. Okay? Um, the type of gun uh, depends on the highest current that you're going to be using. Okay. And flux cord electrode include ionizers to stabilize, deoxidizers to purge the deposits of gas and slag, and other metals to produce high strength, fertility, and toughness. Those other metals, those are called alloying elements, and they help in the wire to make higher strength, more ductility, and better toughness and things like that. So alloying elements or adding, we're adding to our weld, okay? Usually flux core usually have extremely high current and high deposition rate, okay? The most common shielding gas mixture for FCAWG is 7525. Um, this one, I think it's kind of interesting that they say that when we use a mixture, it's better for out of position welding, but you can still use 100% CO2. All right, we'll do questions for discussion in just a moment. Take care.